Welcome to this lesson on how to transpose a formula that has square roots in it, such as this one here, t equals 2 pi square, square root l on g. And to make, uh, you're being asked to make l the subject, so you've got to get rid of all the stuff around it, the 2 pi, the square root, and the g. And a little way of figuring out the order if that's what you're having trouble with, is to do this. What's the first thing that's being done to the L? It's being divided by G. The next thing that's being done is it's being square rooted. So that's step two. And then the last thing that's happening is it's being times by two pi. So I liken these to socks and shoes. So one pair of socks, two pair of so second pair of socks, and then your shoes. Which ones have got to come off first? It's got to be your shoes, unless you can take off your socks without taking your shoes off. One of my students said that they could do that. They have yet to prove it to me. But anyway, so the thing is that you take the shoes off first, which means you undo the times by 2 pi. And you do it by doing the opposite of timesing by 2 pi, which is divide by 2 pi. And then you work your way backwards. The opposite of square rooting is squaring. And I'll put that in a bracket squared to show that. And then the opposite of divide by g is multiply by g. So all you have to do to both sides is these steps in the order that I've got them first, second, then third. So doing the first step, dividing both sides by 2 pi, I've put t over 2 pi and this 2 pi over 2 pi. I could put that whole 2 pi square root L over G over 2 pi. It takes up a bit more space and it can be a little bit more confusing to write it like that. So when you've got something like this happening, something times by that square root you want to get of this, all you have to do is divide that thing by itself, which I've done here. So anything divided by itself is 1, so I could just cancel all of that and write 1, or I could go 2 into uh, 2 pi into itself is 1, and 2 pi into itself is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 times that thing is that thing. And that's the next step. So step two, square both sides. So that's what I've done in the next step. Put that in a bracket and squared it. And you always need to put of any kind of fraction that you've got, if you're squaring it or raising it to any power, put it in a bracket and that way you make sure you square everything in it. Otherwise it looks like, if you don't have brackets, you might it would look like maybe just the T is being squared, which is how you would read it if that was the case. So, and then I've squared this whole thing by putting that in brackets as well. And then this squared will undo that square root, so I like to cancel them like that. And so on this side of the equation, I'm left with L over G, and that's what I've got up here. So L over G, or T on 2 pi all squared, equals L over G. And then the third step times by G, and I've done that in the next step, times that whole thing by G, and I've times that by G as well. So this just becomes that, so this is g times that thing squared, and these g's cancel. It's always best to put uh, something in this situation that's just a whole number or just a letter, and it's cancelling something on the bottom. I reckon it's always best to put it over 1. Sometimes students write it, may write it like this, L on g, whoops, that's supposed to be a g. Uh, they'll actually do it like this and L on G, and I just write times G, and sometimes that can lead to a mistake. It's not obvious that those two cancel because this really needs to be on the top to cancel with that on the bottom, and it's not obvious that that's on the top of a fraction. So that's why I like to put it over one, and then you go G into G goes once, G into G goes once. L divided by one is L, one divided by one is one, one times L is L, or you could go 1 times L is L, 1 times 1 on the bottom is 1, L divided by 1 is L. Either way you get L. And really the purpose of purpose of timesing by that G is so you do cancel that G. It doesn't become a 0, as a lot of students think it does. If it did, you would end up with 0 times L, which is 0, over 1 times 0, which is 0. 0 over 0 is undefined, and you've gotten rid of all of the letters. So they don't become zeros. They, anytime you cancel something on the bottom with something on the top, it either becomes the number one or some other number, either positive or negative, but not the number zero. It never becomes equal to zero. Really key point. 
And so this is the next step. So g bracket t on 2 pi all squared equals L. And uh, swapping it around so that L is now the subject, uh, it becomes L equals g bracket t on 2 pi all squared. Now if you had to expand out any brackets, if that was what your teacher wanted you to do, you've just got to make sure you square everything in this bracket. So in the next step I've done that. I've squared the t, I've squared the 2, and I've squared the pi. And again, this g, if you put it over 1, then when you times fractions together, it's always tops together, bottoms together. You end up with g times t squared, as I've got here. And 2 squared is 4, and then pi squared is just pi squared, and 4 pi squared on the bottom. So either of those two are acceptable answers, and you just need to check with your teacher how far you're supposed to go in this kind of question. So that's the first example with... Uh, uh, where I'm showing you how to make the top letter in here the subject. I'm going to also now show you how to make the bottom letter the subject, which is a little bit trickier, but it's actually not as hard as it looks. Okay, so here's the same formula, and this time you're being asked to make G the subject. So just on doing the same uh, things in the same order that I did in the first example, Dividing by 2 pi on this side, you end up with this, then squaring both sides to get rid of the square root. I've done that here. And now g is on the bottom, and I need to make g the subject. So the way that I like to do it is, first of all, square everything in this bracket, which again gives me t squared on 4 pi squared. And then whenever you've got a fraction is equal to a fraction, and you want this letter on the bottom here, all you have to do is turn both fractions upside down as I've done in this step, so it becomes 4 pi squared on t squared equals g on l, and now the g is on top, and it's very easy to get rid of the l. If you try and cross multiply and things like that, it takes a little bit longer to do it, it will work, but this is a much quicker way. And so in the next step, I've times both sides by l, again, this l needs to go over 1, and then timesing that, uh, the tops together, you get 4l pi squared, over 1 times t squared is t squared, and here l is equal to l over 1. These l's cancel, so l into l is 1, l into l is 1, and all of this becomes equal to g because the rest are 1's. 1 over 1 is 1, g divided by 1 is g, 1 times g is g. And then swapping the equation around, or the formula around, so g is the subject, this is the answer. So that's how you make the bottom letter in a formula, the subject in this type of subject, this type of subject, type of formula that's also inside a square root. So that's about it for this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please leave one. I'll see you in the next lesson.